Duty Morton from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. In this episode, I'll show you how to implement Oracle Mobile Cloud Service Analytics for your mobile apps running on Android. As a mobile app developer, you've probably been tasked with turning on analytics in your mobile app, and you need to understand what's required. You've come to the right place. In this episode, we'll examine the nitty-gritty details of implementing analytics in your application. So let's go back to the scenario that we used in an earlier episode and imagine that you've built an application that technicians use in the field to track work orders. Let's look at what you need to do to enable your mobile app to capture and post analytics for this application. You've maybe already heard about the MCS Mobile Client SDK that makes calling the MCS APIs, such as analytics, much simpler. Now, we won't go into detail about the steps for configuring the SDK because those steps are covered in an earlier episode. But let's go through a checklist of the key steps so that you can make sure your application is ready to go. First, you need to make sure that your application is registered against a mobile backend in MCS. Look in the settings for the mobile backend and make sure the application is listed along with the application key. Next, make sure that the MCS Mobile Client SDK is installed. Here you see the mandatory jars for analytics highlighted. Then make sure that the mobile application is correctly configured. In the Oracle Mobile Cloud Config XML file, make sure that the settings for base URL, app key, and mobile backend ID match the settings in the mobile backend. Also make sure that Analytics is enabled. Finally, make sure the application has been given the required permissions. The application needs access to the internet, network state, and location information. Okay, so you've confirmed that the MCS Mobile Client SDK is installed and that the Analytics capabilities are available and properly configured. Now, when someone uses your mobile app, the app can send information about system events to MCS, and you'll be able to view reports about users, sessions, and API calls. If you want to see data on custom events, though, you need to write some code. Let's see how to do that next. Let's take a look at the methods that are available in the Analytics API for logging information about custom events. The Oracle Mobile Analytics JAR library includes two classes that enable mobile applications to post events, the Analytics and event classes. The analytics class contains methods for logging new or existing events, for posting all events to the server, and starting and ending sessions. A session is simply a logical grouping of events organized to capture a user's typical interaction with the app. For example, you could start the session when the app starts or when the user logs in and end the session when the user logs out or quits the app. To begin collecting event data, you need to either start a new session by calling start session or call the log event method, which starts the session automatically if one does not already exist. All events are stored locally in a JSON file until the application calls either the flush or end session method to upload all buffered events to MCS. If the app is offline, it will post the events later when it's able. For long running sessions, it's a good idea to call flush periodically to keep the server up to date and to reduce the post payload size. The event class contains methods for constructing new events, for setting and getting properties for an event, we'll go into what we mean by properties in a bit, and returning information about an event, such as the event name or timestamp. Going back to our example scenario, let's see how we can add code to the Fix-It-Fast Technician mobile app to log custom events for each step in the technician's workflow. One of the things that you want to get insight on is the delay between when a technician receives an order and when the technician fixes the issue. Is there a problem scheduling calls? Do technicians have what they need to resolve issues? Or is something else causing bottlenecks? So let's add some code that logs an event whenever the mobile app user changes the status of a work order to work order on hold. The first step is to obtain a reference to a mobile backend manager to get access to the default mobile backend. The default MBE is the one that's specified in the Oracle Mobile Cloud Config XML file. Next, you get a reference to the analytics service because you'll need it when you're ready to log the custom event. 
but before you can log the event, you need to create it. You call the event constructor, passing in the name of the event, work order on hold, and the date. The third parameter, which you learn about in a bit, is optional, so let's just pass it null for now. For this example, let's assume that a session has already been started. Next, you call the log event method, passing in the event that you created, and then you call the flush method to post events to the MCS server. This example shows only one event, but you can log a series of events and then call the flush method to post all the events to MCS. Or, if you're ready to end the session, you can call the end session method instead of flush and all buffered events will be posted to MCS. Now, when a technician uses a mobile app to put a work order on hold, the event will be captured as a custom event and posted to MCS, where it can be charted in the analytics section of the MCS UI. We're not quite done. Knowing that the work order was put on hold is useful, but since you want to figure out what's causing delays, you need to capture additional information about the event. This is where event properties come in. When you construct an event, you can pass in properties that provide additional information about the event. The properties are stored in a hash map of key value pairs, so you can define as many properties as are needed to describe the event. You can add the values to a hash map and pass a hash map to the constructor in place of the null value that we specified earlier, or you can call the add property method to add a key value pair to the hash map of properties for the event. The key and value must both be strings. In our example, let's call the add property method to add the property reason and set the value of the property to parts ordered. Now, when you look at the events report in MCS, you'll see not only that a work order has been put on hold, but you'll also be able to see the reason why it was put on hold. Let's look at one more example of a custom event, work order resolved, but this time we'll define more than one property and put everything in a new hash map. Just as we did earlier, we'll get a reference to the mobile backend and then the analytics service. This time we'll create a hash map containing properties that tell us more about the event, such as the location of the parts, the time it took for the technician to drive to the worksite, and the time spent on site and we'll specify values for each property, hard-coded here for convenience, of course. And then, when we construct the custom event, we'll pass in the hash map that contains the properties, log the event, again, let's assume that the session has already been started, and finally, for this example, let's call the end session method, passing in the current context, to end the session and post the event data to MCS. Now, when we look at the events report, we can see the work orders that have been resolved, and we can analyze additional details, such as the amount of time that the technician spent on site. We can then use this information to help technicians become more efficient in the field. All right, now you know how to call the Analytics API to post custom events to MCS. Next, we encourage you to explore the Analytics API documentation and check out other episodes on this channel. And remember, the best way to learn how to work with the platform APIs is to jump right in and start coding. Mm -hmm.